Alright friends, now we're going to talk about something cool, the inline if statements, or we call it sometimes ternary operator. So instead of writing the if else statements in multiple lines, you can go and put the whole thing in one quick line. So it is quick, shorter, and doesn't take a lot of space. So let's understand what this means. So we start as usual with the if statement, and after that we have our condition. So nothing new so far. And as we learned before, next we're going to use double points and then a new line where we're going to tell Python what to do if it's true. This time, instead of all of this, we're going to stay at the same line, but this time before the if statement, we're going to write a value like for example a, and with that we are saying if the score is greater or equal to 90, then go and assign the value a. So that means we define what what can happen if it's true before writing the if statements and the condition so this is the syntax and now let's say that it is false the score is not higher or equal to 90 then after the condition we use the statement else and after that we define what can happen if it's false so as you can see now we have everything in one line we don't have to have multiple lines and here we have new rules on how to use this the first one this time you cannot skip the else you must include both if and else in each inline if statements the other one if you have multiple conditions you cannot go and use the else if so in this structure you have only if and else and there is no else if and there is the one more thing that is really amazing you can say the output of this inline if statements gonna be stored in a variable so it is quick expression to calculate the value and then store it in variable so as you can see it is very powerful simple readable and really easy and quick to write but here the trade-off you can use it only if the logic is very simple so let's go and practice about this okay so now back to our example where we have the classical if else statements with multiple lines now we're gonna go and convert this to one in line so let's do it step by step i'm gonna rewrite first this part over here the true so if the score is higher than print a but now instead of saying print a i'm gonna go and assign the a first so i'm gonna say okay it is a if the score is greater or equal to 90. So as you can see, I'm reading it differently. I'm saying here, it is A if the score is greater or equal to 90, but in the classical one, we read it like this. If the score is greater or equal to 90, then print A. So it is like the way around. And now this is of course not enough. We have always to include an else. So if this is not true, what's gonna happen? We're gonna print F. Now, as you can see, the whole logic is in one line instead of having multiple lines. Now, of course, if I go and here comment of all those stuff and execute, nothing can happen in the output because there is no action. I'm just like saying the value is A. So instead of that, we're going to go and put the whole thing in print. This is something that you cannot do with the classical F statements. So I cannot go over here and put everything in one big print. It will not work, but this is why this inline if statement is cool. So if you go and execute it, you will get an A. So as you can see, we are getting the same result, but this is way cooler, shorter, and easier to read. Now, what else we could do is that we can assign it to a variable, and then we can go and print the variable later if you want, or do any other manipulations. So we're still gonna get the same results. All right, so that's it. Let's go and try something else. Like for example, we can have something more complex where this time we have an else if. So let me just zoom out. Now we have like three values and we have to try to put everything in one line. So now, as we learned, we cannot go and use the else if here in the inline. We have only to use the if and the else. So this is how I do it. I usually like read it. So we say assign A if the score is equal or greater to 90. Else, don't go and assign F immediately. We still have to check something. So we're going to say else assign B if the score is greater or equal to 80. So this looks exactly like the first part. So it's like we are starting completely new if and this if needs as well an else. You cannot skip that, my friend. So if it is not true, only then you can write an if. So you can see we have completely new if statements exactly after the else. So with that, we have like two in line in one line and let's test it. So I'm just going to go and commit everything here. So let's go and execute. We will get A because this condition was true and the value here get assigned. Let's have something like 85 and execute you will get P because this part failed and then Python went to the else and the other condition is checked. Well, it is true. That's why we got a B. Now let's have 50 
as you can see we're gonna get the final else so yeah as you can see each f need an else and if you are putting everything side by side the last else should has the last value and now there is like one trick still you can put this in multiple lines if you put everything in parentheses so you can say the first part could be here, then the else, and the final else. If you go and execute it, you're still gonna get the same results. But now my friends, this all makes no sense. If you have complex logic where you have things are nested like this, you have two conditions and you are checking multiple stuff. When things got complicated, go back to the classical if else statements because it is then easier to read. Don't misuse the inline if statements for complex logic. It is here only for quick stuff. So you want to quickly check something, then assign a value. So this is a really cool way in order to write our conditions. Alright friends, now we're going to talk about the second special type of the conditional statements, which is really new in Python. We call it the match case. It's, so it's all about we evaluate an expression or a value against multiple possible values. And Python is going to execute the block of code for the first match. So now let's understand what this means and why do we have it. So now let's say that we have the following task where it says convert the long name of the countries into two letters abbreviation. So that means we have to convert the long form into short form for the names of the countries. Okay, first let's go and write it in the classical way. So we say the country is equal to, for example, let's say United States. And now what we're gonna do, we're gonna go and check the value of this variable and then print the abbreviation. So we're gonna say if country is equal equal to United States, then what's gonna happen? We're gonna go and print the abbreviation, right? So it's gonna be US. And if the value is unknown for us, let's say we want to print unknown country so now if you go and execute this you will get us now of course we have to go and cover all the countries right so let's go to the next one let's say else if let's go and cover for example india so if the country is equal equal to india then print the abbreviation in so now if we have india over here in the country and execute it you will get en now what can happen my friends we're gonna have really very long list so for example the next one let's say egypt eg and another one or germany the E and so on. So you can imagine how long this code is gonna be. So now in Python and as well in any other programming language, if you have this scenario where you have a value and you are comparing it to multiple other options using the equal operators, you can use the match case. So the syntax for that is very simple. We start with the keyword match and then the value that we want to evaluate, it is the country. So after that we have double points. So with that we said, okay, I'm gonna go and evaluate this value and after it you get write all your cases or let's say the patterns that you are searching for so how we do it we hint enter and then case and now all what you have to do is to write the value that you are searching for so you're gonna say united states and then double points and another enter be careful of the abundance now we are at the second level so we say print us so actually that's it we have covered the first case let's go to the second one case india then double points print en so again we have another one case egypt then print eg and the last one case germany print de so now with that we have covered our four cases over here but what is missing is the else right so now here if we didn't find any matching with those cases we can write the default case so if none of the above did match you're gonna do it like this you say case and then underscore like this and then double points so we are saying if none of the above is matching then go and execute this case the default one so it can be print unknown country and that's it my friends so now let's go and compare them side by side now by just the visual of this this one is really easier to read than the previous one right you have here sometimes if then else if then else and the variable is repeated like here five times in the match case we have it only once and as well the equal operator is everywhere so the things that you have here to do is way more than the match case the match case looks really clean neat and very organized so now let's try this out so we have here the country india and if you go and execute it the second in 
came from our match case and if we go here and say Egypt execute you will get AG so my friend it is working now of course here the big rule is that you can use it only if you are matching values so for example in the previous example with the student scores we have greater or equal those stuff will not work because you cannot use it as you can see over here we don't have here any operations because this one is matching the values exactly using the equal operators so we cannot go and use any operators like greater less or even the logical operators so this is only for matching one to one if you have complex logic where you have multiple stuff you still have to use the classical if else and by the way this works only with the python version 3.10 and newer so if you have an older version you cannot use this at all and what else we can do ah by the way we can go and add a pipe over here and we can check multiple values like this so if it is united states or let's say usa so if it is one of those two values we can print usa so so let's try this out let's have here usa and execute you can see we are getting us so if you have like multiple variants that has the same output you can separate them using the pipe but of course that's it we cannot go and use any other operators so this is another special case that you can use in order to write the conditional statements that is clean structured and easy to read and to write. All right, friends, so now let's have a quick recap about what we have learned so far. So now we use the if statements in order to build the first condition. We use the else if statements in order to have a follow-up question if the answer of the previous condition or answer was false. And we use the else statement as a fallback. So if all the previous conditions are not true, the last thing that's going to be executed is the else statements. Now, as we have learned, we have like different designs for different purposes. If you use only the if statements, you are building just one quick condition. So you want to do a quick check before doing something. Like for example, in data engineering, we check if the file exists before loading it. Now the other design, we have the if else. So if you have like two codes and you say either execute this or that. Now another design, if you have a lot of else if, so you are doing like branching, this you're gonna use it if you have many options, but only one should be chosen. So only the first match wins. And then we have learned that we can do if statement inside another if statement. And this is very helpful if you want to make a decision inside another decision. So it's like you are saying, okay, first check whether the user is logged in. And then we can say, okay, let's check whether the user is an admin or a guest it's like you are building a decision tree and then we have learned we can design it like this we could have like independent ifs so if after if after if so this you have to use it if all the conditions must be checked nothing must be skipped all the conditions are equally important and you want to check everything not just the first match and we have learned as well if you have this scenario where you want to do quick and short decision you could use the single line if statements or we call it in line if statements so everything is compacted and in one line but don't forget we are allowed only to use if and else you are not allowed to use the else if and the last thing if you want to match exact values and you would like to have clean and readable code then you can go and use the modern match case so you can use it if you want to have clean readable and fast code but of course you cannot use it for complex logics or combined logics it's only for matching exact value so those are the types and when to use what all right friends so that's all about the conditional statements they are amazing in order to ask questions inside your codes and react based on the answers so you have now the feeling that your code is deciding and now we're going to talk about the second type on how to control the flow of your codes we will learn how to repeat things using the loops in python this as well is very fun and important so if you like this video and you would like to have more free content like this then support the channel by subscribing liking commenting this really can help the channel to grow and to reach others like you so thank you so much for watching and i will see in the next video.